gets is Teresa James, and on this Teresa James Explains, we're looking at Apatosaurus, but not just any Apatosaurus, the Jurassic World Apatosaurus. Um, as you know, I've already did a review and unboxing of the Brachiosaurus because I have like four of them because I'm in love with Brachiosaurus, favorite dinosaur. Uh, the Apatosaurus is hit now, it's fall of 2021, and I found one in a Target and got super excited. So first of all, looking at this box, um, uh, I, I just, when I was a kid, Sor I always wanted giant sauropods. You can see I have brachiosauruses here. The apatosauruses I have are behind me. Um, but the idea is that I've always wanted like large sauropod figures and they're finally here. And I'm an adult, so I can afford them. Um, but the idea is really cool because uh, you see it here. It's a scene when they're in the uh, uh, their paddock for all herbivores. But let's get started with the initial unboxing. Now, as usual, I will use my official Jurassic James opening scissors. Uh, I just got from Renfest because why not? So, um, I have not seen this figure before at all. Let's see, what's the best way to do this? Technically, this is a top. Oh, actually, I can pull it. I'm so, go here, and, oh, that's new. Let's put you guys up for now, let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see here. So, all the parts here, so the box is empty. What's this here, folks, right there? Anyway, it's neat how it does this. Uh, okay, it slides out. Just right in the back of that. Anything in here? Uh, no. There's more padding. So, looking at the old throw here, we have. Uh, here. I like the way it looks already. So here's the main torso. Here's the tail. And so the tail, interesting. Then she has stripes up here. There's stripes up here, so the tail goes in like this. Fun. You see, like that, and like this, and that. Plugged in. And I, I doubt there's much force needed because this is a child's toy. Oh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, that's one thing, too, about these figures is that, or any figure, is that a lot of times the tails are made smaller uh, because they want to fit them in a box and display and shipping and all that. So these guys just said, well, a symbol on site, which is great. The heads here. Let's see. Ta da! I like that. Really cool head. And it's exactly the same design as the, the tail for the most part. And you plug it in like that. And ladies and gentlemen, I give you Jurassic World Apatosaurus. This is really super awesome. Uh, I mean, honestly, if I had this option, I wouldn't have bought all the other sauropods. But, so the tail can move this back and forth, not up and down. The head and let neck move by the side, not up and down. The head itself can rotate around like this, yeah. And then I believe the mouth opens, very adorable. Uh, I mean, I just like, if you don't know, my favorite dinosaurs are sauropod long necks uh, because, I mean, look at them, like land well with things. So that, there, there she is. And okay, now looking at her hands and feet, now here's where the, the um, it's a toy, love it, absolutely. As a science person, there's questions. So I uh, wanted to point out so you know, in your own understanding, for these long neck sauropods, uh, there's two, well, Apatosaurus was, was the first specimen or first type specimen was discovered in 1860 in Colorado. Uh, Marsh named the actual genus uh, species Apatosaurus Ajax, Ajax after the Greek hero. Uh, Ajax, the guy who, um, you know, if you heard of the Trojan War, that guy, uh, and that was in 1877. So uh, there's a whole history about Apatosaurus, the Brontosaurus, and all that stuff there. I will cover that in a different video. That video will probably be with my actual other Brontosaurus fi or Apatosaurus figures, and we're always lined up, and I'll do the story then. Um, in the meantime, I'm just looking at this guy, Jurassic World, you know. But looking at the forelimbs, or you know, what people will call a hand on a human, uh, the only thing I would say there is that sauropods are really neat because uh, the diplodocus 
oh, sorry, right. Late Jurassic period, North America, there's a Plodocus type, and then there's a Brachiosaurus type called the uh, Macronaria. So in general, the Diplodocus type have like slightly shorter arms than legs. Uh, their bodies kind of go more horizontal and their heads are more horse-like. Whereas the Brachiosaurus type, which I'll just do a comparison with one of these girls, uh, they have usually longer arms, shorter legs, the head, they kind of arch more up and the head's more boxy. So to give you a size comparison of these two, they're, I mean, they're about, I mean, the hump on the back here is tall, but they're about the same, like, well, actually, the Brachiosaurus is a little bit bigger, but just barely. Um, and, you know, obviously for heads in the clouds. But the idea here is that uh, uh, one, we see lots of sauropods in the like, Jurassic period. So aside, in North America in particular, we have Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, there's Diplodocus, Camarasaurus, Barosaurus. So, uh, you know, it's believed these sauropods are all slightly different because they're feeding differently. Um, an example of that in Africa today, we have, uh, in Savannah at least, we have uh, wildebeest, uh, sorry, herbivores, wildebeest, rhinos, giraffes, uh, elephants, uh, all the impala, zebras. So they're all herbivores, but they eat different kind of foods. They all, you know, you know, the, the bison, not bison, buffalo, actual buffalo, have the wider sh snouts. That, you know, zebras can, can feed higher, gazelles, you know, narrow snouts. They all can eat different things. Well, the idea here is the brachiosaurus may feed way higher, the diplodocus may feed lower, these guys somewhere in the middle. There's a lot of studies going on about how their necks work uh, based on, they have really thick necks um, compared to like Diplodocus or Cousin. And um, we're seeing lots of different feeding methods, which is why carnivores in Africa have such a hard time because uh, lions, leopards, cheetahs, um, hyena all eat the same thing. Now, yes, yeah, some, you know, smaller ones eat smaller prey, bigger ones eat bigger prey, but they all eat meat, right? So there's more competition there. But for the herbivores, not so much. So that's what we're seeing happening here. Now, um, I'll put you back down here. Now, the name of Patasaurus actually means deceptive lizard because uh, on the tail, there's, you know, you look at the tail, there are bones, natural vertebrae called the caudal vertebrae here. There's bumps going, I'm oh, sorry, go bumps going up off the tail. Those are called neural spines. The bumps going down are called chevrons. Well, it turns out to Marsh, the chevrons look a lot like um, Mosasaur chevrons. I mean, this is obviously in skin, but the chevrons going down look similar to Mosasaurs and not like other sauropods, so the name Deceptive Blizzard came from that. Uh, bear in mind that Marsh found a lot of animals that he named Apatosaurus, so just species and things. That's, that's a whole, again, another story. Um, so the forelimb, the hand, or, or the, you know, first front foot, uh, generally speaking, you have your uh, humerus on our radius, and you have your carpal and metacarpal, these bones in your palm or, or metacarpal, then you have your phalanges, your fingers. What sauropods like in the platypus branch have, they have like a thumb spike, and they have the uh, metacarpal, carpals here and then instead of having full fingers it's just this first finger right here so it's called this is like so you suck like a, like a hoof um and the idea is that when you see so many sauropods four limbs they look like crescents or half moons uh like that they're, they're walking like this right so they're walking on their toes uh like, a, like an elephant uh the back feet are very different let's see if she can she, can she rear up she can rear up yay so um what you're seeing here is Closer to reality, this guy, she has actual claws on all three, and you know, and that's something that we don't normally see in the pocket sauropods. Each have like the hand fist bump, fist thing. Uh, for the feet, uh, so it's one of that they have, she has five claws here. Uh, it should only be three. So the idea is that the, um, the, whoop, there we go. So the, uh, uh, the back foot, usually where your toes and feet point forward, uh, or your fingers like that, theirs on the back feet, like, twist out to the side and they have three clawed feet and then two bunch well, like it'll be these three it will be three clawed feet and like two nubbins without claws so they walk like this basically on the back foot it's, it's a big pad so when you hear the word um the term like uh dinosaur footprints the size of bathtubs it's their back feet the front feet are like little crescent moons the back feet are the the big wide because they, they have a large pad back here like uh elephants basically and that goes for that uh, oh look there's a little the, the little code to scan um, anyway, so uh, I'll point out too, uh, the neural spines are along here, so the back's tall like this. Uh, the neck is sh somewhat short in the pentasaurus compared to uh, barosaurus or even Diplodocus. They're more of a bulky animal. Um, and again, I don't want to say too much now because I'm going to do a video on the, the species as, as a whole. Uh, the tail is really important because we think of Diplodocus like sauropods being long, whip like tails. And yeah, it should have a bit more here. Oh, cool. It did, I, didn't see it. I didn't see that. So, yeah, it goes side to side and then it does like that. That's kind of cool. Um, uh, but Diplodocus is unique or special in the sense that 
its tail is exceptionally long for its body. Apatosaurus, not so much. Um, and there have been studies that look at the, the bones of a Apatosaurus tail and account for the sinew and muscle and all that and say, oh, it could probably whip a little bit, but that's been debated a lot, so I'm not going to really touch it too much uh, this time. But overall, it's a really cool figure. Obviously, um, any Jurassic World nostalgia person like me, it's, this is great, this is amazing. Um, I love this animal because it's, a, it's just a big sauropod. I also like the fact that they're, like, look how, how thin it is. It is very thin. Um, I guess that, you know, they, they would have had, you know, their guts go down. They have really deep ribs. And the funny thing about that is the early um, interpretations of sauropods were, one of them, at least, was that they, you know, they're reptiles, so they walk their arms up to the side. But the problem is their ribs were, like, huge and long. So they would have had to, like, walk in trenches to do that. That's not a real thing, right? But, um, uh, uh so let's look at uh, its well, its movie role. If you don't remember, if there was this really, really uh, angry animal or, or un, un established animal called the Indominus Rex, and what made it stand out as a, you know the, the bad guy creature, and I did an Indominus Rex video, I think last year, I believe, um, and it killed the Apatosaurus. And I, I remember one of the uh, I watched a lot of movie reviews, and one of the people who. Uh, uh, Talk about the movie, say how you know, in their opinion, Dr. Grant, uh, Dr. Sattler, and Dr. Malcolm in Jurassic Park One are very, you know, they they are very real life characters, whereas in their opinion, Owen and um, Claire uh, were not basically. And the idea is that you know, people don't even most people don't even know Claire's name or it's her last name, you know. So, and, and I don't really blame quote the movie, I think it's just our times like in the 90s, there were more character driven movies, <laughs> in the 2000s, less so much sometimes. But anyway, so the, the iconic scene, and it's, this is, they're not, none of this is the scale. So, um, even though they're from the same, like, toy line, uh, is that the Apatosaurus died, and it was an anime, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Jurassic Park World 1, um, and, uh, the reviewer was saying that out of the entire movie, the dying Apatosaurus was a character they felt the most connected to. And, meaning that all the other human characters didn't emote enough or show enough, you know, whatever. But anyway, so... Um, one thing I will say too about the animal, uh, this model, if, if you're interested in the, in the science of it, you're here, so I assume you are, uh, is that if you look at the mouth, the teeth, can you kind of see that, the teeth in there? So they essentially have like us, they have like a full, not, not so much the different shape of teeth, they have teeth all the way down, all the way in the jaw. Um, for sauropods, like the platypus type, their teeth usually kind of jut into the front, and they were for stripping, like, like, like a rake, basically. Um, I did go over that more in the, uh, the Mesiosaurus uh, talk, but like I said, it, those teeth aren't scientifically accurate, but it's Jurassic World, so whatever. Um, you have your nose, nostril here, and the eye right here, and the ear right there. Now, the nostril being in the front, this is kind of a cool thing. Uh, Larry Whitmer, or Dr. Lawrence Whitmer, he, uh, I went to a museum one day, I was in a museum, and I walked into Paleo Hall, and he was on the mount measuring skeletons for his research. And I was like, oh my God, it's Larry Whitmer. You would have thought it was like, I don't know, um, uh, any famous person, like, oh, you know, celebrity, but it was in paleontology, he's like a celebrity to me. And I was asking all these questions, and we see pictures of these sauropods, and they have the nostrils up here. Um, the old pictures show them down here, they have them up here for most of the time. Now they're seeing them down here again. The idea is he was saying that animals that smell, sniff, their nostrils on the front of the animal. I mean, it's a dog, uh, any, any animal, they, they're looking like they're sniff, sniffing like this. So he said, even though the hole for the NARS and those holes right there, their nostrils would have been here, it would have just been covered by soft tissue. Now, some, I've seen some images online that show that more elaborate. Uh, in general, sauropods, you know, we have a lot of, we as humans have a lot of muscles and stuff in our face. Uh, these guys had muscles too for, you know, jaws, but they didn't have as much going on. I mean, we talk, we can eat, we grind our food. They're stripping and swallowing whole. Um, so dif different face, basically, but the teeth would have jutted for it. To me, the image in my head is, is more goofy looking than what we're seeing, even seeing here. But anyway, now, one last thing to point out to this guy, uh, this gal, is that her environment, I mentioned earlier that in late Jurassic North America, she was living with a uh, brachiosaurus now. Camarasaurus is a is the most common sauropod in the late Jurassic North America, seconded by uh, Apatosaurus. So she, it's kind of important. Uh, other contemporaries would have been Stegosaurus. So the idea that these animals in life would have seen each other, not only in the movie, but in real life, would have been in the same environment at the same time, you know, um, in the late Jurassic Morrison Formation, which I, I've actually dug in before. And the predators that we have in the Jurassic World line that would have been their contemporaries are here. They are Allosaurus, which is, of course, one of the most popular predators of all time. 
and Ceratosaurus, who is unfortunately left well known. Um, I would say, ooh, oh yeah, because the Patasaurus is about 70 feet long, um, and Stegosaurus, the bigger ones, get to like 25 feet. So that's, you know, roughly you know, 25. <laughs> That's about right, yeah. Okay, about yeah. Um, the the Ceratosaurus is about right here for size. The Allosaurus, I think, is too small. Um, I, and I, I remember, I believe, in the movie, the animal was a uh, juvenile, but this model is actually an adult because the crest is like fully formed. So, in these Jurassic World figures, like these five animals would have been contemporaries, meaning that they lived the exact same time, exact same place, same continent, same region. Um, whereas, like T Rex, like Tyrannosaurus Rex. Outside of the movies, never bit into a patasaurus. There was never a, a patasaurus male for T. Rex because Tyrannosaurus Rex lived uh, 65 million years ago, and these guys, well, 66 million years ago, and these guys lived 145 million years ago. They were separated by time, uh, uh, you know, a lot of time. But also, these guys were found in North America. So it was T. Rex, but again, different time. Whereas something like Spinosaurus was a different time too. It was like 100 million years ago in Africa. So. It would have not even seen these guys as well. Were there sauropods where it lived? Yes, but they weren't these species, you know. So that's something to point out here is that when you're doing, if you, if any of you are like me when you were a kid, all the kid, and you want your time accurate, sensitive things, these are contemporaries. They live together. And again, there's a lot more in that site. Uh, it's a really cool, cool space. But I just wanted to focus on these guys in particular and show you like there's this is where if she were to go home in time, this is her her contemporaries, her friends. That being said. Uh, thanks you for uh, tuning in. Uh, next time we're going to do Stegosaurus. This is um, and actually Stegosaurus is why I do these videos. This is this is the first. It's my example on tours and lectures of why now I do these reviews of these toys because you'll see. That being said, I'm, I'm like in the woods of this is, uh, this is this is a very happy place for me right now. I want you to know how happy I am to have this happening around me. Uh, that being said, uh, uh, go get your Patasaurus. It's really cool. I like her a lot, and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.